All right, this is uh, <clears throat> just a quick discussion on the difference of the Hinson clutch as compared to the stock Yamaha clutch. So what I wanted to show is, um, this is on the 450, which is generally the same clutch as the 250. As a matter of fact, I'll be doing the 450 in a new video at some point. So I look forward to that. But at this juncture, I just wanted to show you the lack of engagement. So this is the free play. I've tried to adjust this. And the difficulty with the Yamaha is that your engagement starts here. If you, if you tighten the uh, cable, it just raises the engagement. So it's not so much in the middle, it's at the top. So there's very little modulation if you look here. So your module, it, engagement starts in here and this is your modulation. So you have modulation from there to, to here. So that's, that's your modulation. The, the Henson clutch gives you modulation from basically about an eighth of an inch all the way through the throw of the clutch. So the engagement starts here at the point about an eighth, and then you have full engagement back, back there, but you can modulate all the way up to the top. clutch kit you get uh, six springs that are specified by uh, Henson and particularly particular about the springs they use and they use a eight piece clutch kit it eight, it comes with eight plates and a clutch basket pressure plate an inner hub for the for the clutches. See, and they come marked to line up on here. You'll see little black marks there. So when you drop these, you line it up with the uh, cross markings here. And uh, see if we can find the black one. Ah, black one. Drop in your, as you can see, they all line up black. Drop in your pressure plate, springs. So, that's what we'll be installing today on this little YZ250. Pretty stoked to get her done. Um, All right, so the, the Hinson clutch kit comes with almost everything you need. And generally speaking, everything you need. Um, if you want to be particularly particular about your installation, you can pick up um, a gasket, a new gasket for your Hinson cover. For me, I I prefer picking up a new gasket, it's a new kit, spent a lot of money for it, and uh, given the money I spent for it, I'd rather it all be put together with new bits. So with that, I bought a 
little gasket inside here. I think it's four bucks from uh, Rocky Mountain ATV. And then a new lock washer for the clutch, which you can see in here. I'll give you the part numbers later. Um, so I just picked these two up. You can reuse your, your lock washer. It's got another um, tab on it if you want to reuse it. For me, I'd rather use a new one and uh, just be happier that way. Anyway, uh, good or done. All right, what we're doing today is we're going to put in the uh, Henson clutch on a 2020 YZ 250. The barge is low. I've had the clutches uh, uh, sitting in oil, prepping them for installation. And what I'm going to do right now is uh, remove the brake lever so I can access the clutch cover. And then uh, once I uh, remove this brake lever with a uh, six millimeter Allen key, I'll drop the clutch down to the brake down to access the clutch cover. So that goes right now. There is a cutter pin in the back that needs to be removed. So you got to remove the cutter pin in the back. To do that, there's something you want. We'll take a look, see what we got. You have a little spring in here that you can release. I can just drop this in. I have complete access to your clutch cover. It's like eight millimeters ago. In there. So, two ball. One one at the top. You have <coughs> one bolt that's marked the blue dot. It's identified by a uh, hash mark on the uh, cover. We won't be using this cover, we're going to be using a Hansen cover like that, but that's the way that one goes. So if I all the same length except for the top one, as you can see, if you take them out, except for the top one, they're all the same length. So put this over here, and then we're going to crack the cover. Okay, right. So I'm going to just use a little rubber mallet. <coughs> you should get some spillage here. So, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take out the bolt holding the uh, outside clutch plate uh, in place and then we'll start disassembling it plate by plate. So since we got the leech with this right here. And it used to that we need to uh, one for the cover.
So you have the McKinney bolt slash it for the springs. The springs are much smaller than the Henson springs. So now what we're going to do is just ease the cover off. There's a hat right here that you can see inside. Actually, there's just a tiny bit. There's a little hat. So when we pull this off, we have to be careful of that little hat sitting right there. There it is. So we have the hat. We have to slide that hat up. So now that we have the hat out, <clears throat> we can uh, pull our clutch plates together, but we also have to remove this bolt right here. There's not, I'm sorry. You can see it. it's locked in on one side. I believe it's right there. You can see it. it's pulled up. Now you have an option to either reuse this because you have one good side right here, or you can replace it. I've chosen to replace it uh, just because of the very slight, slight marginal difference of the weight distribution of it. But uh, uh, other than that, it's, if you want to save the money, you can just reuse it. It's a two use. Okay. That can see my nut has been slightly damaged. So these plates just slide off. And these are the Yamaha clutch plates. And let me see. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna set these down so I can get those last couple. I think there's one more in there. Looks like it. I have to get this nut off first. So what I'm gonna do right now is get my little clutch holder and grab hold of this thing so I can spin this nut off after I get the, the bed clip off. So I think I can, there, let's see it better right there. So that right there has to get bed back up, take over nut, and uh, that's it. We'll, we'll start dropping the gasket in. All right, so we pulled back the retaining clip. Now we're gonna pop it off. There it is. We put that back. And of course, we have a replacement for this one. I'll throw that there. The retaining bolt right here. Of course, that comes off counterclockwise. So, now these are cut in there. And now we should just slide right on. Good. There it is. This is a very important piece because it's your washer. It goes back here. So, and then, of course, we have the last of the Yamaha plates. So, there it is. So, let's just pause that for a second. And come on. So, this comes up. Basket comes up. Now, you have some bearings right here that you want to be careful with, not to pull them off or damage them. So, these are some roller bearings you need to be really careful with. So, I'm going to set this down. So, here are the roller bearings. I'm going to make sure you keep them together nicely. Put them back in. And be very careful with them when you're putting this back together. So, this is the piece that we have to um, get off and the gear. So, and we have to uh, grind these off to get to the gear. So, we're going to grind off one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these. And then we'll get to the gear and we'll put it on the uh, it's a clutch basket. So, here's the Henson clutch basket. Let's see. As you can see, what Henson's done here is they've got these little oval slots to oil the clutch better. Actually, it keeps it cooler a little bit for better oil flow. So, very, very uh, unique design. Also, makes the basket lighter. So, not only does it provide better oil flow, it also lightens the uh, product itself. So, anyway, uh, let's get to work. We're going to uh, take off uh, the Yamaha gear and get it over on the uh, Henson uh, clutch basket. So, we'll pick So we're going to use some contact cleaner to clean it up. So we're going to put it right here, turn it upside down, and get a little contact cleaner on it. This is the orientation. Here is, we're setting up the clutch for installation. So we removed the old clutch, we ground off the gear, which we have all these, we get nice and clean. All these are super, super clean. So we're gonna just put them on, hopefully. Mm. All right. That's a good one, by the way. So as you can see, it, these are tapered on the inside. So if you try to put them on the other way, they don't fit. But if you put them on this way, they go just much conveniently. So if you see, if you try to put this on, it just doesn't fit. Put it on the right way, slide right down. And as you can see, the lettering faces up. And, all right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna clean these screws with uh, rubbing alcohol, and all this up with some rubbing alcohol. 
Brown's home lock height is uh, required by Henson at 272. So we're going to make sure we use our 272. Then we're going to get uh, this put together with the gear. So here's the gear, nice and clean. So we'll drop this gear in here, like so. Drop down. This is tippered, so make sure I get the tipper right in this. All right, so we're just finishing up the prep here. So we got the rubbing alcohol, we're cleaning up the screws, and getting ready to thread them in. So I just cleaned up a little bit of rubbing alcohol. So we should be pretty much ready to go. Get the lactate going. So we're gonna just take these screws and lock tight. All right, now we got our lock on. We got Mr. All right, so here we are. Pretty much ready to go. We do need to take off our hands and sticker. Then we're going to just drop a little gap in each hole. Did you get the portrait mm -hmm. So, using my torque wrench, we set the torque wrench to 40 inch pounds. Yeah. And then we're going to come down and tighten the sockets on the 40 inch pound. So, okay, we'll start. Take 40 foot pounds. Inch. 40 inch. So now we can see we have a copious amount of blood type. Or you guys. So we're just going to dab it. And then we'll tap our screws.
Oh, he's got to be one. One in the group. One in the group. Alright, so now we're just going to come through and keep those screws down. So, here's the gear installed. Yay! Ready for installation. So let's get this in. Got the right there. All right, we're back. And got some lunch. Actually, need to get some batteries from my other part, right? But anyway, we're taking a look see. This is what it looks like. This is what you're going to be working with when you put it back together again. You want to make sure your roller bearings are in there. So you have a sleeve under your roller bearings. You can see that. We got a little bit. So, but, so you have your roller bearings. And this is what we've got to install. So we have clutch basket. Inner clutch basket. Um, we have some clutch plates. And we have been over here um, letting our clutches soak in some motor oil um, in preparation for installation. So I am going to install the clutch basket now uh, and then start installing clutch plates. So we're going to do the inner hub for the clutch. Then we'll put on the So we just installed the clutch basket. Just slides on. We want to make sure you don't dare. You want to make sure you don't damage your roller bearings when you put those in. It just sets back in there. And then we're going to put on our bearing. Or excuse me, our thrust washer. And then there's the thrust washer. We're just going to push it right back in there. Like that. And then we're going to put our clutch basket on. So let me do that because I only have two hands. And we'll see in a few minutes. All right, so after installing the thrush washer after the basket, um, I put the inner hub on. And now what I have to do is put on the lock ring. And if you notice, there's like these little cl clips on each side. And if you look in here, there's a clip there and there that match up. So you're just basically doing this with one hand. Slide that on. You can see that these wing up so that you can fold it onto the, the bolt. Remember we have a 29 millimeter socket that you have to use. So we're going to put on the nut and uh, torque it down to the specs provided by Yamaha. So I will get this going and uh, get back to you. But that's what it looks like so far. You can see we're running out of parts, which is a good sign. So let's get this thing back together again, see how it runs. Great. Bye. So as I just discussed, we put in the uh, clutch basket, or the inner outer hook, and uh, uh, we are in the tin. All right. So, what I wanted to point out before I start putting this together anymore. So, if you notice, uh, and I showed this earlier, Henson uh, cuts out these uh, guides. And um, then on the inside, if you look, he drills these so that you get further uh, lubrication. So, it's really cool. If you look, this, this is really, really great for lubrication. Um, so, and if you look at the stocking, stocking so if you look at the stocking, uh, there's no such lubrication happening, which is very cool. So, we're going to put this back together again. The first thing we're going to do at this point is just uh, tighten down the uh, the nut for the clutch boss right here, and it's going to get torqued down to what it says right here, which is 54 foot pounds of torque. And we're going to get that right under now, so let's do it.
So I've got the put holder in. Water. So you're currently set to 10 foot pounds, so we're just going to bump this up to 40 or 54, right? Uh, what's going on? You're at 150. Right. <laughs> Been drinking? Yeah. You know me. Actually, I already don't drink, but I like to say I do. So just a moment. So here we go. 54 foot pounds. Let's tighten it down. So tightening on this is opposite because it's counter. Oh, See if we're lined up on any of these guys. So we're not. I've bent over. And by the way, this was hacked up when I uh, found it, like when I first opened it up. It's a hack Anyway, so now we're going to drop in the uh, clutch uh, plates. Soaking religiously. So here they are. So take these guys out. One and click at the time. Take one plate out. So you say you start with just the clutch. And so you see it lines up with the outer basket. And then you take a plate and. There's one side where there's like a black mark. One of the tabs. Do you remember? I'll put this on it. Okay. So. And this is just in, out, in, out, and until uh, we get them all over the And these are the same on both sides. So. And it put pressure on both sides of the uh, clutch. As you see. I don't remember that. Nothing. But if you want, I don't remember that now. Well, just in case, I will line it up. Let me put more here. Let's see if I can see that one. Yeah, I'll line these up. So these have little black marks on the outside. I'm not sure if they're weighted. But, uh, we're going to put them on with the back one piece. Is that a plate that was on there before? Mm, the round one? The silver one. Yeah. You can line these up, I know you can. As you can tell, these are very well soaked. And the last plate. It's clutched. All right. So now, beautiful pencil. Not so fast. We have to make sure we put our cap on. So now we're going to feed our All right, so what we got here, we're set up to 7.2 foot pounds. Right now, I'm gonna keep using the uh, screwdriver just because it's a little bit faster.
All right, so we got everything snugged down. Now we're just going to tap them. So we're getting a little spin on that. So what we're going to use. Okay. Alright, let's see if we have any clutch action. Got a nice release there. It was super thought. So, I'm going to see that again. And what you can do, if, if you look right here, you'll see the pressure plate. So that's good. We're all set. We're going to button this up. Give a nice quick wait for you. We'll get some pressure out. Anyway, so our last bit of kit here is our engine cover. I used a new gasket instead of using the old one. So we just tap this on. Only suggestion I got on this kit is it'd be really cool if they gave matching nuts. That's it. Just is